Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.0.4. In this episode, I'm going to be starting out with my crewed lunar flyby mission, the Astrid 3. We've already got the Bilbo probe launched by the Astrid 2 on its way to Venus, and I would like to see if we can get uh, Kerbal flying by the moon. Uh, of course, the, the tricky thing is more about bringing the Kerbal back, and whether we can get the Kerbal back safely through the atmosphere. Um, and I'll, I'll be very patient with that. I'm, I'm obviously a little bit worried, uh, but I'm going to try it anyway, and I'll save my regrets for later. Uh, let's take a look at Mission Control to see what contracts we can pick up. So, uh, we'll want uh, science data from space around Earth, I think we can do, perhaps. Uh, science data from space around the moon, uh, definitely, we'll be able to do new stuff like that. And then the, the lucrative contract being crude lunar flyby, we've got two years to take care of it, and we have to be below 5,000 kilometers. So, yep, uh, and return home is a part of that, so very important. Okay, well, we'll take it. I think that's, well, successful re-entry, I guess. Uh, we've got one year to do that. It only requires unmanned, though, so it's not giving us, I mean, we're, we're talking about, why, why are they even bothering to give us the unmanned one? What about the manned one? Oh, well. Anyway, uh, if it requires unmanned, then there's no point. Alright, so that's all we can do, and that's quite a bit anyway. Alright, uh, well, let's bring it out to the launch pad. Let's see, let's have Valentina do it this time. Okay, here we are with Valentina on the Astrid 3. Uh, the capsule is already overheating, this is not, this is not what I was hoping for. But uh, let's line up with the moon to make this as simple as possible. Uh, toggle pump. Looks like as much as the, all we can get from the clamps is five. I guess that's the case. Our solar panels are stowed, so it's a little bit tough. All right. Well, uh, let's see. Time warping. Uh, it's going up to. Well, I guess we'll have some electric charge depletion initially. That's weird. It used to be five units per clamp. We've got three clamps. But I guess that's not true anymore. Okay, we are at the right inclination. I mean, right position, let's say. And it doesn't look like our electric charge has depleted too much, uh, regardless of what fuse box is trying to say there. All right, SAS on, throttle up. All right, Valentina looks ready to go. Actually, wasn't consuming any consumables while waiting on the launch pad. Very good. Very well. Ignition. And launch. Okay, slow ascent. And over to Smart ASS. Okay, well, this rocket will take a little bit more to get to orbit than the previous iterations of this system obviously because its acceleration is really really low at this point so I have seen the new Star Wars movie and I think it is excellent I will not say anything more no spoilers or anything but uh, it is excellent I am very happy with it Actually, this week has been a really good week for space stuff in general. Not only did we have Star Wars, we had Childhood's End, which is a good old science fiction story from Arthur C. Clarke, and they did a three-part miniseries on the Sci-Fi Channel. And they've got a new series called The Expanse, which is really, really good. Very realistic. Uh, they got zero-G stuff. They, they have thrusters firing where they're supposed to and that sort of thing. So, yep. And then Billy Dangerous Horizons was released, and I have that, and so I've been playing around with landing on planets. I'm a little bit disappointed that I can't really run it, uh, run the planetary landing portion at a high graphics level. For some reason it causes artifacting on my graphics card, and I do have the most updated drivers, so that's a bit of a downside. 
but on the whole, I, I like how things are working out, and I'm actually looking more forward to the other stuff they've promised for this year, which is uh, like character customization and hopefully some EVAing and walking around ships kind of stuff. Uh, they need to fill out the economy a bit, I think, is uh, my main complaint right now. I know a lot of people want missions, but I'm just interested in making the economy more dynamic, and they have promised crafting. And that should do the trick. So we'll see. Then there's a Star Citizen, which had uh, some very nice new stuff, including their own planetary landing thing. Uh, so, uh, I mean, they haven't added it to the game yet, but uh, they had a nice little trailer for that. Uh, yeah, we'll see how that shapes up. It's looking more and more interesting. I've seen people playing it on Twitch. And, uh, yeah, it looks... It looks positive more positive than it has been for a while. It looks more like a game. In other things, the NASA NASA's budget got increased by quite a lot actually. It got more than was requested. And co commercial crew was actually fully funded. Uh, we uh, So the budget uh, I believe was passed today. Uh, unless uh, there's some procedural thing I don't know. But I believe they've passed uh, an omnibus bill as they call it. And so uh, they have a Europa lander, I think, in there, and commercial crews fully funded, and they gave, they threw money at SLS, lots and lots of money on SLS. SLS got a big boost, but uh, yeah, planetary sciences was uh, uh, will get a boost, and so it's looking good. And as if all of that wasn't enough, we have a Falcon 9 return to flight. I mean, uh, we'll cross our fingers about the landing portion of it. That's occurring on Saturday, unless it's delayed because of weather. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm hoping to stream it on Twitch. So uh, that'll be like uh, 5 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, assuming everything goes on time, which it won't. But yeah, there's a launch window of about three hours, I think. I haven't seen such a good positive space week in a very long time, between Star Wars, uh, The Expanse, Childhood's Zen, Elite Dangerous, uh, NASA, Falcon 9, whole nine yards really. Yeah, feeling pretty good going into the winter break, Christmas, and all of that. Uh, if only they could have gotten KSP 1.1 out this week. That would have been, uh, made it really, 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 well, it was already really, really, really spectacular. But, that would have been, uh, icing on the cake. So far, I think the best element in all this mix, except for the NASA budget stuff, is, uh, probably Star Wars. I'd say I'm very happy with how that turned out. And, uh, yeah, I was really worried. I mean, I, I was a Star Wars fan from the original trilogy, and then the prequel trilogy sort of lost me, and now I'm happy. I'm I'm happy again. I'm also a Star Trek fan, by the way, uh, though the recent movies have totally lost me. Star Star Trek used to be uh, a little bit more serious. Now it's about gag comedy and action, and so I'm I'm a little bit lost. I'm hoping that uh, they say that they're gonna make a new series on CBS, and hopefully uh, they'll get back down to to the sort of, uh, it has a sort of temper to it, Star Trek does. Yeah, and I guess uh, my comments on Star Trek are mainly colored by the fact that I saw the recent Star Trek trailer, the Star Trek Beyond, and they, they sure went out of their way to make it look like a comedy. Uh, and, you know, I, I know uh, The Martian uh, got nominated as a comedy, I think in the Golden Globes, right? And I was a little bit confused by that. I wouldn't be so confused if the trailer is an accurate representation of uh, Star Trek if that Star Trek Beyond got nominated as a comedy, though. I'm not entirely sure how The Martian gets nominated as a comedy. I've always thought that uh, the film people did not take science fiction very seriously, which is weird, because it's pretty serious most of the time. I mean, the 50s and 60s sort of... Uh, aluminum foil movies notwithstanding, I mean, does touch on serious issues quite often. Okay, booster set.
Okay, booster separation is good. Valentina continues on. Okay, how much time do I have to save for the rest of this business? Um, looks like eight minutes. And then perhaps a little bit in the next stage, but mainly those eight minutes. So, better just keep the pitch up here. I forget how I did the lunar flyby in my previous series, the 0 .90 realism overall series. I wonder to what extent it was similar to this. It probably wasn't too different. I mean, this seems like the sort of configuration I would do, except uh, probably I had different engines because the tech tree was different. Probably a uh, four booster, four engine core kind of thing is not too different from what I would think of. Okay, booster set. Separating, uh, set, uh, switching to SAS and ignition. <laughs> Let's try that again. Ignition. Okay, Whew. for a sec there, I thought I wasn't gonna burn. Jeez. Okay, let's try Smart ASS again. Hopefully we do have attitude control on this thing. Okay, well it's got to be a slow ride up. Let me detach the escape tower. Uh, activate and set. And set. And set. Oh crap. I pressed the spacebar three times and it didn't decouple. Oh, great. That's not what I want to see. Oh, it, it took out some of our solar panels and something. Jeez. I should have just used the action group on that. That's my mistake. I don't even know what it took out there. Let's see. Um, doesn't actually say. That's not very convenient. No matter, our parachutes are still there. And the capsule. Well, at this point we're approaching apoapsis and I'm feeling like the low thrust of this stage is severely compromising our ability to uh, have enough Delta V to transfer to the moon right now. It's got to be pretty tight and that's not that, that's not the sort of situation you want with uh, your first moon trip. Take a look at the situation. We probably need about 3,100 meters per second more Delta V here uh, to uh, make orbit. And that leaves us with 3,400 left. And 3,400... Uh, well, uh, we need at least 3,100 to get to the moon then. So that leaves us with 300 to make adjustments to come back. And then, of course, adjustments to, you know, maneuver before uh, slamming into the atmosphere. Now we do have the upper tank. No, that's not the fuel tank this upper tank locked with hydrazine and it's got RCS so that we've got that maneuvering ability but that's not much anyway we're uh, we've got three more minutes in this stage and we are now going down I'm keeping the nose up I think it'll be alright I'll try and manage the whole situation so that we can make orbit safely at least Okay, here we go. We're uh, getting to the end of this stage, and the next stage is worse on acceleration, so and we have to do about a thousand meters per second from the next stage, so not a great situation here. 19 seconds, 18 seconds. So I'm keeping the nose up. Our vertical speed is picking up, so we'll start going up, hopefully, but not for very long. Okay, we are going up for about a second or so. Okay, stage separation. Hold on, let's go to SAS, stage separation. Nope. Nope. 
It still doesn't want to do it. What is this? Is it? No, it's not that. We're starting to go down. I've pressed spacebar quite a few times now. There's a bit of a soul panel floating by. Come on, now, how about now? No? I, it doesn't matter how often I press spacebar, it doesn't wanna... Oh wait. No. Okay, um... I'm gonna manually stage, I guess. Um, this is not the best thing to do. Uh, actually, this might not work at all. Okay, well, I didn't ask you about vapor in the feed lines. Okay, that's very stable. Alright, I can activate the, this engine. If it wasn't stable, uh, we'd probably use the RCS to stabilize it. But I certainly couldn't have used all these separation motors. Yeah. Okay, well, we continue. I have no idea why Spacebar was not working to... I, I heard the sound, but it wasn't staging. That is... I've, I mean, Spacebar is the one reliable thing in Kerbal. What the heck? Well, not really, but I mean, half the time it doesn't stage in the first place, but I've never had it uh, where I pressed spacebar that many times and it still refused to stage. That is so weird. Well, anyway, that delay has caused us all sorts of problems. Look at our acceleration, it's not even half a G yet. I'm not gonna press spacebar, even though I do want to use these little separation motors. Get the tiny bit of delta V they have at their disposal. Well, the margins are tight, and nobody said the margins wouldn't be tight. So here we are. Relative inclination 0.17 is not bad. Getting close to orbit here. Vertical speed picking up. Should be able to come close to circular. Given the way we're going. Okay, here we go. Approaching orbit. Periaps is about to turn positive. Acceleration is still mild at best. Vertical speed picking up, but not quite where I thought it would be, so we're not going to be quite circular. Okay, that'll do. Uh, 260 by 204. Okay, well, we've got 3,333 meters per second altogether left, except for the RCS at the top. And that's not much, because that leaves us with 200 to spare after we make our transfer. I'm taking out the solar panels the solar panels manually because I don't trust well I don't actually remember which I assume it's action group one but let's not make assumptions with the Kerbal on board here okay well let me try and plot for the moon and see how it goes okay as you might expect I've plotted for an acceptable free return trajectory and so their requirement was that we get within 5,000 kilometers of the moon and uh, yep, yeah, so just checking it out. Yeah, below 5,000 kilometers. Here, this plot gets us below 4,000 kilometers and retains an Earth periapsis of almost 90 kilometers. I'd want 80 or so, actually. But uh, 3,138. Uh, currently, it looks weird because the engine's gimbaled. So, um, well, let's take Smart SS off. 3,333 is what we've got. So we're talking about 150 extra. Now we've got hydrazine here. I'm trying to peek inside here to make sure that the hydrazine up here is locked. I mean inside the service bay. Mm, can't really get to it. Okay, well, all right. Let's get closer to the maneuver node. It looks like it'll take us about six and a half minutes or so to do this. Oh, we wanted to do some earth science. I don't think we've got EVAs yet. So, crew report. 
Well, uh, they're not paying us that much, so uh, so this should be fine. Oh, uh, no, I wanted to send that, sorry. No comm devices on this vessel. Well, there sure is a comm device, but I guess I should extend it. Here. We lost some stages, clearly. We recovered some stages, too. Oh, yeah. That's good. The uh, boosters. Okay, and yes, it looks like that contract was completed. Not very lucrative. Just SAS it here for now. All right, I'll settle the fuel down and we'll get started. Okay. Translunar injection underway. Okay, we're getting close to it. I will try normal staging again, but I don't have too much hope. I'm gonna switch to SAS. I'm gonna run the RCS, I should. Uh, yeah, let me do that. Just to drain the RCS fuel from here as much as possible. I don't think we'll use too much. As you can see, it's not going away very quickly. Should have started that earlier, as usual. Okay, well, I don't have time to drain it again, as usual. So, let's try staging. Okay, well that worked. Okay, how about these rockets? Oh, very good. We got to use these. That's helpful. Okay. Now, staging for reels. Okay, once again. Okay, and those little engines do not have any fuel right now so I need to oh that's still going by the way hmm interesting okay that's unlocked and proceed well 160 meters per second is all we've got to spare okay here we go we've got an encounter we have to pass around it so that we get the free return portion. Uh, it's not reading it. Uh, okay, hold on. I think we'll take with RCS here. There's no benefit to using the one kilonewton thrusters. They have the same ISP as the RCS while running with hydrazine here. Okay, and so the max moon periapsis that we can deal with is 5,000 kilometers. If we go beyond that, I'll just have to take a high earth periapsis and adjust it over there. Hopefully, though, we'll have a low Earth periapsis here. We're about to find out. Okay, looks good, looks good. Um, I'll keep it at 88 kilometers there and 3 3,823 kilometers, 3,824 kilometers there. RCS is off. Okay, so 87 now. All right. Well, that that looks pretty good. 87 is not low enough, but I can't uh, fine tune it any more than that right now. So we'll have to do that over maybe past uh, lunar SOI. Okay. Let's take this into the sunlight and make sure electric charge is all right with just these two panels. I don't think we've done a crew port high over Earth, so we'll get that done too. Okay. Well, no, I don't think just two panels is going to do. Let me extend this third one. I mean, actually, 17 days will do the trick. But uh, I think it's safer, even though it's lopsided, because we've got this one broken panel. I do have the CO2 scrubber on, by the way. Huh. The CO2 scrubber doesn't seem to be working right now. Well, now it is. Weird. It's accumulating quite a lot. Not really using the lithium hydroxide very much. Is, this, is it really on? Jeez. 
Oh, this is getting pretty hot, huh? It's glowing red already. Guess we should have it do a little barbecue robot. It wouldn't really help in this case, will it? The, they did that on the way to the moon to make sure both sides got evenly heated by the sun, but... Okay, anyway, well, it says uh, CO2 scrubber, no space for more. What no space for more? There's plenty of space for more carbon dioxide. What are you talking about? Just in the pod, there's plenty of space for more carbon dioxide. And there's more space for oxygen, too, if that's what you're going to be doing. CO2 scrubber doesn't work. Oh, I'll have to do high over Earth on the way back. I forgot about it. Well, I guess uh, I can do it right now. Okay, crew report. Okay, high over Earth. Only five points worth. Let me activate one of the antennae. Ah, went away. Okay, review report and transmit data. Let me get two antennae out just to balance that bit out. Okay, so we did that science, and we are going to sneak into, well, this isn't showing our moon encounter right now, but I, I, I believe, I believe that we have a moon encounter. There we go. Let us verify that we did not cross that boundary too quickly. Our Earth periapsis is now 79 kilometers, which is fine. Okay, and our lunar pass is at 3,825 kilometers. But we can do a crew report from here, surely. Really wish it wasn't hot already. Okay, there's the moon. Here we go. Valentina's excited. Okay, we're getting to our closest approach. I don't think we can do any more science here. This is still not low over the moon. Okay, well, we've got all the conditions met except for returning home. Okay, well, it's at 79 kilometers right now. I feel that that might be a little bit too low. So I'm going to turn on RCS. Oops, still on time warp. Turn on RCS. After physics. Yes, there we go. And raise it to, let's say, 84. I have no idea, but... We haven't actually brought a probe back, have we? From not from lunar orbit or lunar flyby. The, we were just sending a Kerbal right out. Hmm. Anyway, uh, 84 kilometers. And now that I mention it, uh, let me just make sure to zip up the save just in case there's any sort of glitch. I'm not. There are certain ways I'm not interested in losing Valentina. If it's a legit mistake, then that's one thing. I think this is a high enough pass that I can retain the service module, but I'm not sure. I think that's something we're going to test out. I'm, I'm thinking about that mainly because of how the capsule is glowing red. But the, the module, this module is not. This module is very cool by comparison. This gives me hope that it can withstand more than I think it can. Okay, be careful. Uh, well, we've got seven days water remaining, so we have to bring our orbit down significantly so that we don't have an orbital period of 11 days, but we can do multiple approaches, and that's the plan. Alright, I'm going to bring in the solar panels and the antennae. Okay, I'm currently using some spare hydrazine from the service module in order to slow myself down as much as possible. Just bring the apoapsis down a bit, but every little bit counts. Okay, we are in the atmosphere. Still got a little bit of heating on the capsule. That bar is going pretty bad actually, but it always does. Don't really know what to make of it. As noted, the service module is relatively cool compared to that. But maybe I'm misreading the situation. Got a lot of little bars. 
Okay, the decoupler is threatening to overheat. Maybe I should decouple it before it does. Um... Okay, or it's just gonna do things all on its own. Um, I'm gonna try and decouple the thing. Yeah. I think that was probably my best move. Yeah. But, things don't seem cool over here, mind you. Oh, uh, I need to, hold on. Uh, shoot, uh, shoot, shoot, shoot. Hydrazine. Don't turn around, don't turn around. Why are you turning around at all? Aerodynamics should say that you go that away anyway. Maybe I should uh, do descent mode or something. Top isn't that heavy. This is not good. other stuff blowing up. Well, as long as it blows up before it hits me, that'd be nice. We don't really have much electric charge. Food, water, and oxygen, yeah, but electric charge is also critical. Okay, we have passed periapsis. Uh, we do spend more time in the atmosphere going out than we do coming in, so gotta keep that in mind. As far as heating is concerned, though I think, cross your fingers, we're all right here. The question is whether our orbital period goes down enough so that I I have enough electric charge. Right now it looks pretty bad. Three day orbit, one days of electric charge. Uh, it doesn't look like it's bringing us down quickly enough. I don't know how long Valentina can last without electric charge. I think we'll need to aim to bring her down on the next pass, otherwise, I mean, if she lasts that long, even. Well, well, we're about to find out. Will Valentina perish due to lack of electric charge? We can't really just slap a solar panel on here, by the way. I don't think it would last, considering the way this is glowing and how the other pieces exploded. So, yeah. I'm not sure what to do about that, except we need to make sure not to leave it leave it like we have right now. Okay, well, I'll see you at Apoapsis. Okay, well, we have our electric charges running out warning, and, well, there's Earth. We're quite high up right now. So, uh, four hours to Apoapsis. And we will be out of power by the time we reach Apoapsis. Says no connection. I wonder if that means we can't maneuver. I assume it's like stock where RCS still works. No, I can't, uh, I can't activate RCS. Looks like flight computers. No, flight computers not blocking me. Let's see. Yeah, RCS is not working. Okay, well we'll have to take 84 kilometers. I don't know how long Valentina's gonna last. And we can't reorient using Smart ASS because I can't turn on RCS. Hmm. Not enough electric charge. Next time I should have locked some electric charge, I guess. 
Yep. I don't know if this got oriented properly once it hits the atmosphere. That's a perilous look at the approach. New Zealand. Don't often see New Zealand on our little flybys. Uh, we are definitely orienting the wrong way. I really shouldn't have turned RCS off. Uh, I can't turn on descent mode right now either. I don't think. Hmm, it's not really letting me right click on the capsule. Can right click on that, but oh, there we go. Yeah, no luck with uh, descent mode. CP. Oh, what well, I'd give for a fuel cell at this point. That tank is gonna blow, and the parachute's probably gotta go with it. But Valentine is still alive. Maybe I should. I don't know. This was definitely a mistake of mine. I should have kept RCS on. I was just thinking about restoring the save. But uh, this is not a glitch. This is this was a mistake. And we are orienting badly. Probably because this hydrazine tank is so big. Well, uh, something exploded. Ah, uh, the tank in the middle. Uh, well, there goes the parachutes. Can the capsule flip around properly now? I mean, it doesn't have that tank on the top, at least. If it can, let me double check. Do we have VNG parachutes in here? Maybe there's a chance that Valentina could parachute down. Not that VNG parachutes are very consistent, mind you. Yeah, we do have VNG parachutes. So maybe, maybe Valentina, if the capsule can survive, can parachute down. But uh, I think we, we can't even uh, get down on this go around. Uh, well, going in front forward is definitely not helping. I'm doing some wishful thinking, trying to use my joystick to turn it around, but uh, there's nothing, nothing going there. RCS doesn't work. Well, uh, well, that's the end of it. Well, we knew it was a dangerous mission. Let's go back to Space Center. Well, so we have we have lost Valentina, the first Kerbal lost in our program. For once, it wasn't Jeb, but uh, well. Well, like I said, it was a dangerous mission and probably inadvisable. I think, in retrospect, that was certainly the Delta V issue wasn't the problem. I mean, we had, we had, we went to the moon, we came back, we were able to align for re-entry. So it wasn't the Delta V particularly, but we need some way of putting electric charge on the pod. If we could have oriented the pod properly, or locked the battery, maybe. Maybe locking the battery would have worked. If we could have done that and had the electric charge ready to reorient the capsule properly on that second pass, I think we would have a, had a better shot. Um, it seemed like she was still okay with after spending a whole day without electric charge. So, yeah, we could have had her uh, go out without electric charge and then swing back in. Let's take a look at what parts we have. 
Okay, well, here was the Astrid 3. And we have some time left to do the contract. And I do intend to do the contract still. Um, we really, really don't have any fuel cells, I don't know. No, we do. Damn it. We could have put a fuel cell on. When did we unlock that? Hold on, let me, let me just uh, pay the funds for this. Well, I'll look into how to redesign this. Obviously, we can't put the fuel cells on the service module since we dumped that. And that was our huge problem. We... Looks like uh, we get plenty per second. We'll need to put hydrogen and oxygen as well. So that complicates matters quite a lot. This pod really isn't meant to carry all of that. I guess we could sneak it in. Can we? Um, will it uh, configure the right uh, proportions if I slap this on? Uh, no, there's no hydrogen oxygen option. What's the ratio? It's about two hydrogen to one oxygen. So I guess I could go in here. No tech for liquid hydrogen. Oh, okay. All right. So to be clear, we couldn't have used fuel cells because we can't put liquid hydrogen in anywhere, right? Even a service module tank. Uh, yeah, no tech for liquid hydrogen. Okay. Well, it makes me feel a little bit better that uh, we didn't have that option because I certainly didn't think we did. All right, but uh, well, let's see what tech we need to uh, get liquid uh, liquid hydrogen so that we can use the fuel cell. That seems like something constructive. Early hydrolox engines. Well, we have to be able to store hydrogen to use early hydrolox engines, right? Couldn't be so silly that uh, something else is required to do that. Okay, so we need 27 more science. And there are numerous, numerous ways of getting that, but we need a quick way. Obviously our Venus probe will be able to provide that, but it's going to take too long. I, we could wait until the Venus probe thing is done. It's still within the two years that we have. That said, I don't think we've done all of the science that we could do. I mean, this orbital telescope, we haven't done. Um, magnetometer boom, we haven't done. And there's a universal storage version. And yeah, those two. We could send the uh, launches with uh, this to record the visual observations and to get the magnetometer data. And that that would probably be worth science that we have not collected. Taking a look. Oh, it's called Kerbin here. It's weird. And it doesn't have our reports from it. But yeah, so that's an idea. I'll, I'll ponder that. Uh, for the next episode so that we can get the 27 science unlock hydrolox engines which will benefit us in other ways as well and we'll probably redo the whole Astrid thing make an Astrid 4 with fuel cells on the top of the capsule and then send a Kerbal on a lunar flyby it's a shame that it has taken the life of Valentina for us to figure this out but uh, we can look forward to better things for the space agency in the future. On that note, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.